everybody. How you hey, doing? Everybody. <laughs> We're so excited tonight. Give you a few seconds to log on. Drinking a I will rise my hot tea. We got some hot tea and we're so excited to see what God's going to do in the Holy Spirit. Been downloading hey. us. Yeah, the Holy Spirit's been downloading us and a fresh fire has been blowing through here in the glory. So we just can't Amen. wait to see what God is going to do through this class. And we just have an expectation for you guys. We have an expectation because God is, God is the way maker. He's the way maker. And some of you need to hear that tonight. He's the way maker. He makes the way where there is no way. And that's what's so good about him. Hey, y'all. Let me see who that is. Me that He's the way maker. It's me. I'm trying to get it down my volume. There we go. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to scroll to see who said hi to see who's on. Ah. Oh. I'm so excited to see everybody. A lot of you guys have done webinars with us before, and I'm excited to see each one's different. You know, each one's a different anointing. So I'm really glad that you took a risk. You know, you take a risk and God always rewards risk. He does. Yes. I love that about God. <laughs> he loves risk. Isn't that great? Be a risk taker. A risk taker. I love it. That's the key. Yeah. Is being a risk taker in life. <laughs> hey, Jody. And I'm trying to see like my other computers froze. I'm just trying to give it a second so I can see who's saying hi. Hi, Mary Beth. Hi, Jody. Hello. Hi, Sherry. Oh, you can see my mom, Mary Beth. Hey. We're excited to be teaching tonight. Got some downloads. We've been praying. <laughs> We have another two minutes or so for people to get on because we don't want anybody to miss what God's going to do tonight. Holy Ghost is going to do tonight. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I'm excited. I'm excited for him. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be awesome. I'm Thank just you. excited because I got my studio now. I know. She's got her studio. And God's ready to advance, advance the media waves. <laughs> Influence. Hi, Tammy. Oh, there we are. Now I can see everybody's comments. Hey, Tammy. I'm so excited. We're going to start another minute or so. Just want to get everybody a chance to get the notification that we're going to start teaching and flowing in the Holy Ghost. We're going to be talking. Kristen. Oh, hey, Kristen. How are you? <laughs> Miss you, Kristen. I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> few more people's logging in we're gonna be talking about abandonment and abuse tonight that's the we're covering trying to go in order i guess in sequence i know some of these subjects cover multi-topics because some yeah. of the yeah, so that some of them will overlap so if we barely touch on one part of an orphan spirit or something like that realize there'll be another class that'll go in more detail so yes. doing good miss you too ah all right <laughs> oh, that's so good. Glad to hear that. Everybody's doing good. I know. Everybody's doing good. Thanksgiving is coming up. What a, a week to start your inner healing. <laughs> time time to be around family and, and not let old wounds fester. So that's exciting. God's going to do something so old wounds won't fester when you get together with your family because I see it in the spirit realm. So that's exciting for you guys. Yes. Oh, thank you, Lord. Whoa, thank you, Papa. That, amen. Amen. So we'll just start praying. And um, we prayed before we got on, but we just want to pray with you guys right when we're hanging out with family. Amen. <laughs> None of those things are going to fester. They're no longer going to fester because God's just going to heal them. <laughs> amen. Amen. I agree with that. I mean, and Lord, just show me that. I'm excited, Patricia. I'm excited for the people. This is I, the I'm very excited because this is a subjects that need to be taught more in the church. Amen. And I'm so glad that we're able to have this webinar to teach it. Amen. So that we can educate people and people can educate us. But I can tell you right now, I saw an axe. 
Before we went live on air, I saw an ax and I watched it being cut off of bloodlines, abandonment and abuse. I watched it being cut off of bloodlines. God had me write a prayer. I'm going to pray it with you. I want everybody to pray it with me in the end. Mm -hmm. This thing is going yeah, all the way back to Adam and Eve and all the way to the coming of Christ. Amen. So get your, get, get excited because (laughs) We're, we're, I'm, I'm like, ain't no party like a Holy Ghost Holy party. Ghost I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited because he said he's redeeming the time for the people that yeah. think it's less. And, and that's a that's a huge thing when, when the Lord says something about a, 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 a corporate anointing that comes out with divine alliances. God honors unity. And, yeah. and a lot of people know that. And the word for this class was redeeming the time. So, so hold him at his word. When God says it, it settles it. That time is going to get redeemed and you're going to see the breakthrough. So you just don't, the Lord's showing me that, that some of y'all had some mixed emotions about this class, but trust him. It, it, it's a, it's a divine time. It's a divine season to just lay down, just make a choice right now. To lay down any fear, any anxiety. We just find it and break it and saying the Lord's going to do it. Just rest. Just peace. I declare peace over the class right now. Yeah, yeah. We find that confusion off right now. We just break it. True. Yeah. Confusion right now. We say peace, peace, peace. Hey, Kamika. Amen. All right. Looks like everybody's logged in. So we'll pray and get started. So I'll Amen. start it up, Patricia, whatever you want to do, do it. So Holy Spirit, we just thank you for each person yeah. in this class. We honor you. We love you. We honor you. Thank you that you're showing up with we your power. You. You're showing up with your sword of the yes, spirit. Lord. Whoa. And Papa, thank you're you, bringing Jesus. We just thank you. This is your webinar. We dedicate it to you, yes. Holy Spirit. And we say flow. Perfect. We take our hands off all control and say, you're in control. We do not want to do anything but honor you. And we thank you, Lord, for giving the people revelation. As we speak, we just thank you that the revelation is quickening their minds and hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we know we're going to be teaching tonight on abandonment and abuse. Now, we all know that rejection and all that and trauma all goes with abandonment and abuse. And like like you said, we're going to teach on other things down the line that are all going to flow together. But the one scripture that the Lord gave me is um, Deuteronomy 4.31. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon or destroy you or forget you, forget the covenant with your forefathers, which he confirmed to them by oath. Amen. So God's saying that he will not abandon you. God will not destroy you. He will not forget you, that he loves you with, with an everlasting love. And he's a God of love. There's nothing found in him but love. Yeah. So I just want to, I want to talk a little bit tonight about, and we'll just flow back and forth about abandonment. Yeah. So say that scripture one more time so they can write it down. Do yes. You know Deuteronomy 431. Okay. For the Lord, your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon mm-hmm. or destroy or forget the covenant with your forefathers, which he confirmed to them by oath. So God, by oath, said, I'm never going to abandon you. I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to destroy you. And I'm never going to forget the covenant that I made with the forefathers. And I made that same covenant with you. This is, you know, even for us teaching this, it's very emotional because abandonment and abuse. I'm just going to share a little story before we start because I got to be led by the Holy Spirit. One night I was. I, God gave me a vision of four principalities and he said, it's abandonment and abuse, inferiority and insecurity. And I thought, why are they four locked arms? And the Lord spoke to me and he said, because them, they, them four flow together and they want to cause havoc. So mm-hmm. when you have abandonment, 
there's always some form of abuse. And if you have abuse, you have insecurity and you have inferiority. And these things travel together because they like to affect you in all four matters. It's a big stronghold. It's a conglomerate. So I want you to know because this isn't found in heaven. So remember, the angels fell and they became unclean spirits. And out of those unclean spirits, abandonment and abuse is a spirit. I want you to know it is a spirit. This isn't something that is just, you know, whoops, it just showed up. It is a spirit. Yeah. I want to read to you something. Abandonment is the act of abandoning someone or something. Yeah. Okay. I want to read this about emotional abandonment. It occurs, okay, this happens in families. There's different types of abandonment, okay? And a lot of people don't realize that. There's emotional abandonment. There's abandonment in friend and relationships. But I'm going to go over, there's, there's signs that, how do I know that I've been abandoned? There, I'm going to give you some signs. I'm going to give you some symptoms. And so each one of us can say, hey, we've had them. Yeah, hey, mom. Okay. Um, and some of us have been through abandonment. We're going to get free from this thing. Yeah. Tonight, I'm telling you, it's going to be cut off your bloodline. Yeah. And we're going to deal with all the aspects in this. By the time this whole class is done, I can guarantee you, you're going to have such freedom that you're going to say, my gosh, I feel like a new person. Because you know why God told me to do this? Because it's right before Christmas when we end and we're going into a new year free and the Amen. bloodline free. And Amen. we're not going to be what the devil says we're going to be. We're going to be what God says we're going to be. Amen. So before I get into any one of these, is there anything that you wanted to share, April? <coughs> <clears throat> Teed it went down the wrong hole. Yeah, I agree with with everything that you said. Um, I've experienced abandonment. <clears throat> I think everybody in here in one way, shape or form has experienced it. But I agree there's different levels because if it's a curse on your bloodline, that's a whole nother level. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to get into that. I just want to teach a little bit on this because the Holy Spirit really put it on my heart. It's yeah. something that, that, um, you know, emotional hurt is something that is real. Yeah. And, and I want to validate anybody's hurt because it is real. Yeah. It is real. Okay. And, and so I want to just give you some signs yeah, yeah. Of, of, of abandonment in, um, in, in, in emotional abandonment. Emotional abandonment occurs when parents do not provide the emotional condition an environment necessary for healthy development. It's undeserved. It's left behind. It makes you feel insecure. And you feel like you've had a loss and a cut off. So some of you have gone through emotional abandonment because you've had family members. I've dealt with this in my own family uh, lineage where, you know, um, a family member was cut off and they felt lost. And they asked me to help in this situation in, 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 in our family. I can't really get in to talking yeah. about it because it's a minor. Yeah. But, um, you know, when, when a parent has emotional loss, then it brings emotional loss that just triggers down the line in family. And it makes the child feel very emotional inside because the parent doesn't have time. Listen, we're in a society today where both parents work. Yeah, true. And when both parents work, they don't have time. They don't have time to listen to your conversation. They don't have time to spend with you. They don't have time to do anything. But the bottom line is, is it's we don't realize that it's actually affecting our children. So we have to have that time to just sit and talk with our kids. And some of you have dealt with this and you're now adults and you're, you're dealing with the emotional hurt of what happened to you when you were a child. And I want to I want to say this to you. God wants you free and he's going to deal with this hurt. I want to validate your hurt that it's real. But we're going to deal with this because what it is, is you just need a mother's love. Yeah. Amen. And if I could grab out and reach each one of you, I would hug you and tell you that you are worth something. You are blessed and you're favored of the Lord. Okay, so that's that. And then it's um, uh, the abandonment can also be in relationships. These are these are uh, about five signs of people that deal with abandonment in relationships. 
they all of a sudden, this is how you know, they become people pleasers. They envy other people's relationships because they don't have those relationships. They have trust issues with people. There's a lack of emotional intimacy. And there's a needing to control other people or their partners or their husbands or spouses because um, of this abandonment. So mm -hmm. it it kind of it kind of affects the personality. Yeah. So now we're talking about relationships. We're talking about family emotional abandonment. Here is five signs that God gave me: unhealthy attachments to another person, fear, staying in unhealthy situations. Uh, sabotaging relationships and commitment issues. These are signs that abandonment is attached to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, you will feel anxiety, insecure, depression, low self-esteem, shame, feeling of loss, and isolation. These are all, all different symptoms of abandonment. But I want to tell you what the stronghold is that is attached with abandonment. And that stronghold is fear. Because things are done in people's lives that cause, that cause this. They're abandoned and then they become fearful. So they don't know how to handle relationships. They don't know how to handle their emotions. They don't know how to communicate because their parents didn't communicate to them. So how can we resolve this abandonment do we go back to when we we're five? Do we go back to what to 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 um th these are the questions that people ask me all the time. Do I go back to when I was five? Do I go back when I was 10? Do I go back when it happened? And this is what I tell people all the time that we what we need in our life is we need family mm -hmm. and we need true relationship yep. with God first. Yeah, God first. And then we're going to need relationship with true family. How yeah. do we find people that are true family? Well, we're going to ask God. Yeah. Amen. That's really the key in life. When I look at somebody as a leader, apostolically, I can see their emotions. I can see their hurts. I can see their pain. I actually let it go because I let people sit under me for a while and then we'll deal with issues. You got to give people a chance to get in church. To, to hear the word of God, to read books, to spend time with Jesus. And this is really the key because abandonment, people have went through divorce. Yeah. Then there's no dad. Then there's no mom. Yeah. People have been, and that is connected with abuse too. So what I'm going to say to you today is I'm just giving you signs. So yeah. I don't know if any one of you have dealt with this in your life where you've felt abandoned as a child because you're, you had a parent who didn't take care of you. And if there's any parents who've done that to their children, please don't come under condemnation because we've all not been the perfect parent. Okay. So we can, we can say that, but I want you to know that I love you all and I validate your hurt. I validate your pain. And I'm going to trust the Lord that in this class tonight, that you're going to be delivered out of emotional abandonment, that you're going to be delivered out of relational abandonment because some people wind up sticking in the in these relationships and it's so unhealthy they wind up adding an ahab or they wind up adding a jezebel and they wind up adding things that can go in deeper okay yeah, yeah. but we're just going to really deal with the surface stuff and we're going to annihilate the spirit of fear i want to yeah. tell you what the lord spoke to me about this he said um first of all in second timothy 1 7 write this down for God did not give you a spirit of fear. He yeah. says it right in his word. So you know that's an unclean demon that fell from hell. Yeah. A spirit of fear. But he gave you power. He gave you love. And he gave you a sound mind. If your mind's not sound because of this abuse, we're going to deal with it tonight. Because there's a root of fear in it. Second of all, in 1 John 4, 18, it says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts mm -hmm. out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Yeah. So let me say this. If, if, if love, if fear is in us, 
It's because we haven't been, been perfect in the love of Christ. Amen. So we're going to deal with how do I, how do I get that perfect love in Christ? How do I come about that? And I don't want to, you know, I want, I want you to step in any, any time, you know, to teach, but I want to share this. We're going to we're going to bounce back and forth, but I want to get into some more details of this because I want you to get free and I want you to share with me if there's a level that you're at. If you're dealing with emotional abandonment because of a parent, you know, let us know if you were dealing with abandonment in relationship, you know, where you feel like you have to please everybody all the time or you have to have a certain relationship. Let us know, because I want to break that tonight. I want to I want to come against that because. You know, sometimes we feel so abandoned and abandonment comes with an orphan spirit too. It also comes with insecurity. We we got a lot of spirits involved in this. It's not just abandoned abuse, but I want to deal with that right now. We're dealing with abandonment, not really even the abuse part. We're dealing with the abandonment. Abuse is a whole other story. Amen. It is. I was just going to add, just like you said, it's multidimensional when you start dealing with these wounds and realize the word says the Lord kept bringing up to me. Psalms 34, 18, that you are he is near to the brokenhearted, that your pain, your hurt, he is near to you and that he will save the, your crushed spirit and heal all your wounds. That means all. That means abandonment. That means abuse. That means every single one. So you need to realize there is, just like there's an anointing to cast out demons, there's an anointing to heal the sick. There is an anointing that yeah. will break and heal these wounds. Because I had wounds inside of my soul that God had a poor I supernaturally. I know everybody's different. God heals different ways. But the Holy Spirit when he did my inner healing, he, he poured in like a flood, like a river into my body. It was like a a anointing that just broke. And like, he would tell me neglect is coming off of you. Like he would literally tell me chunk by chunk. So some of you might start the process tonight, but I'm telling you, he's, he's faithful to perform his word. So if this is if if what Patricia is saying is hitting home to every area of your life, realize he has anointed me and her and he will anoint you because what you are healed from, you can pour out and bring healing to others and take that word. Take the scriptures that Patricia gave you. Take the scriptures that the Lord and declare that scripture over yourself every morning that he is near to your broken heart because this is painful. When you start dealing with these things, you're going to start crying. Sometimes when I do inner healing with people, I bawl because they can't release their pain. So I'm releasing it for them. So don't hold back. Allow if you need something specifically, don't walk in shame. We're not here to bring shame. Patricia gets inner healing on a regular basis. I get inner healing on a regular basis. Something popped up in Africa that I might need inner healing on. I'm real and as raw as we can get. We're not preaching at you but we live this stuff and we have to ask holy ghost people hurt us i mean in ministry in families we're human so we're not we're not coming at you as something we don't face and i know a lot of people um you you see other people ministering but you don't realize we've been healed and 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 dealt with some of the same wounds that each one of y'all have dealt with And, and some of the other spirits she said a lot of them that i've seen with abandonment um, was neglect could be victimization could be rejection could be um when relationships end like friendships or um co-workers i've seen people feel like that with with certain like business partners um loneliness self-pity orphan rejected unwa- unwanted uh, unworthy a lot of this stuff so we're we're getting the, the strong men, but realize God may pull you to another place. And he might tell you in a dream, in a vision, as you're praying, please pray over yourself as we, as you take these classes the whole week, yeah. all of it, all of it, just sit before the Lord because we're not your Holy spirit. And he knows which one of these need attention. We can go and we can break everything that he shows us. But there's still something that when you set before the Lord that he, like Patricia said, he brings that perfect love. And sometimes wounds are so painful. I can't tell you, you probably you too, Patricia, where you set before God 
And only he can heal those deep places that no man on this earth, no woman, no friend, Mm -hmm. that only he can pour it out of you. And it will bring breakthrough. It will bring breakthrough in your marriages. I see marriages changing through this class. I see relationships. I see people trusting again. So God has downloaded us stuff prophetically. But you're going to have to walk out this process. And you might not know that you were signing up for a rapid inner healing. But the, the downloads, the, the experience that Patricia has and what God, my testimony, each one of you are going to get your book. It's powerful. He, he is going to reshape your identity through this class but you have to sit through the pain and it's gonna hurt it's gonna hurt but it's gonna get better <laughs> oh no it, it will hurt and but it will get better because we're gonna deal with with all this stuff and um you know um i had to even sit back and look at you know my life okay so growing up my house was a loud house um everybody talked over everybody everybody was loud i had two brothers you know and everybody was just loud 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 the loud family and you know my mom worked a full-time job my dad worked a full-time job and then he did real estate on the side and it was so busy because my family was so busy that my mom didn't always have the time to spend with us so we kind of like sometimes fend for ourselves and you know did things and went through emotional uh things in, in in school and in different things but the lord I always drew to the Lord, even when I was young, I would say, God, please help me. And a lot of people ask me this all the time. How could this have happened to me when I was a child? How can this happen to me when I was a child? Well, when you're, you're, um, I want to just share this with you, something that was very spiritual that happened. When my son was under 18, he's under my authority, right? But when he turned 18, he had a dream and he said, Mom, I had a dream and the Holy Spirit came to me and said, you're a man now. You're 18 and you're under my authority. Mm-hmm. And he explained this whole dream. OK, he butt dialed me. Awesome. Let me give everybody. I don't, we don't have any live viewers yet. Um, we prayed in the spirit. We shut some things down. Woo, woo, somebody's here. They said, woo, woo. Yay. I'm going to be Richard for tonight, everybody. We're going to start the whole webinar all over again, but I do need you guys praying for us as leaders and intercessors. I know a lot of you carry that gift on here. Please be praying for us and we will be praying for you for this webinar. I'm trying to see who is live now. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm just going to crush it. I just put it on my phone. That's okay. That way you can see the comments. I'm just trying to see. Oh, Valerie's here. All right. Can you believe it? We finally got in after an hour. We're going to start the whole class all over again, guys. So we'll be starting it. Oh, my husband's calling probably to make sure. Yes, dear. I am you. I'm going to be you. and We're going to teach and it's going to be good. Okay. I'm live. It's working. (laughs) Yes. Yes, dear. Love you. Bye. Awesome. (laughs) Sorry, guys. Always have to honor your husbands. He's out of town working. I always choose to honor him first. So he was working on it to make sure I'm going to be him. We'll just, I'll just, I'm going to have Richard's name. I'll be Richard Stutzman. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'll be Richard Stutzman for this class, guys, because my husband had to jump hoops to pay for this class under a different name so we can get here. But hallelujah. We're going to start all over. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. All right. Uh, do you want me to contact anyone? It's totally up to you, babe. You can go for it. We're going to get this information out. I'm just excited for it to work. I've never had this happen before. So we're starting the whole class all over again. So I'm hoping everybody can get back on because I know it'll run a little bit later. But, hey, if not, you make them watch it later. All right, Patricia, you want to invite the Holy Ghost this time? <laughs> you want to pray? Oh, Lord over? God, Holy I Spirit, all we those love you. I erased all those videos in case you're looking for them because of all the confusion and distraction the enemy was trying yeah. to bring. No more. They're erased. We're starting over. So pray well, it in, Patricia. Spirit. 
Thank you. Holy Lord. Spirit, we just invite you. We just invite the yes, King of Kings. Lord. We just invite your glory. Yes, we just Lord. invite your presence. And we thank you, Lord, that you are here and thank that you. wisdom and revelation are being released right now. May everybody's eyes of their understanding be enlightened today, that every veil would come off, that they would see, they would hear, they would know, and we would all have a teachable spirit. Tonight, yes. that we would hear in your kingdom you, and we would see, so thank we would you, know God. the truth. So, thank Papa, you, we thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Come in your power. Come in your power. Come in your glory. Amen. Shift it. Thank you for shifting Shift it, Papa. Thank you, Lord. Shift all it. All right. Amen. So, we're going to start all over. And um, that way, the, the people that didn't log on and the people that heard you'll hear it a second time. But I just believe that um, revelation will come to you even as we talk about the scriptures. We just started talking about the discerning of spirits. And obviously, through all this, the enemy hates this gift. But we love this gift because with this, <laughs> uh, we love this gift because it shows us what heaven is doing. Let's just be real. I mean, that's the bottom line of this gift. Um, I'm going to share a few scriptures and then that we talked about earlier that I want you guys to meditate on this week to really just take in these. Oh man, I just feel it shifting. Thank you, Papa. Just release your glory on everybody watching right now. Whoa, like waves of your glory, the frequency of heaven. I release the frequency of heaven of everybody watching and yeah. in the airwaves around this webinar. Yes. Pour it out like rain. Whoa. Yeah, Lord, pour, pour it out. Like rain, like rain, refreshing. Wipe off all the distraction around their minds where the enemy tried to bring confusion to this webinar. I just release the glory over your mind. I just declare you will walk in the gift of discerning of spirits. This is yours. This is your portion. Thank you, Lord. Just brush over them, a fresh wind of Holy Spirit. Around their house, a fresh wind. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord. You, All right, in Jesus' name, Amen. Um, I'll I'll go over the scriptures really quick, and then I'll let Patricia start describing the gift of discerning of spirits or distinguishing spirits and the difference between the two. Um, the first scripture that the Lord wanted me to share with you guys is First Corinthians twelve ten. And it talks about how God gives the gift of faith, the gift of prophecy, miracles, tongues, and all this stuff. But it also talks about discerning of spirits. And that's one of the things that me and Patricia, it's one of our strongest gifts. So when we walk in this, we want to be able to give you the foundation scripturally to be able to share biblically what this is and have a language for it. As me and Patricia talked about earlier, the problem with this gift is it's not really talked about except Jennifer Vez and James Gall. That's the only two I know that have talked about this gift. And they don't really have a language to describe it. Would you agree, Patricia? Yeah, they don't. No, they don't. I mean, there's others that have taught on it years past, like Kenneth Hagin and John Wimber and Dark Prince. But they're all generals that have gone home to be with the Lord. Amen. So we're the next generals that God's raising up in an army to teach people the truth. And that's why there's been opposition tonight, because this is something the enemy doesn't want taught because we got a first heaven, second heaven and third heaven we're dealing with, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Truth. All right. So as it talks about in first Corinthians twelve ten about the gift of discerning the spirits. We also went into Luke 5, 22 through 23 about Jesus, Jesus knowing the thoughts of the people around him. He discerned and said, why do you argue in your hearts? So me and Patricia were talking about there's different times that this gift, if you operate in it already, or if this is brand new to you, you will discern others' thoughts. And there's the scripture for it. So we're laying foundation that this is a gift from the Holy Spirit. That's what the first scripture is talking about the second scripture is talking about how you will discern thoughts it's a part of revelation that flows with this gift and the third scripture the lord gave me was ephesians 4 18 through 19 where paul prayed the eyes of their heart would be open and that was he was talking about their spiritual eyes 
That's where you discern. That's where you see in the spirit. So you flow. And, and Patricia brought up a great point because even James Gall said he prayed that every day over himself. Patricia said she declared that every day because when you declare that the eyes of your heart and you speak that verse over yourself yeah. this week, you're going to start <laughs> walking in discernment. You're yeah. going to start walking and seeing more and understanding more. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just thank feel you, Lord. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The last scripture I wanted to share with you guys is 2 Kings 6, 17. And Elijah prayed upon the servant's eyes, Lord, so that they open them up so that they may see. He was not talking about the physical eyes. He was talking about the spiritual eyes that is in the heart. And so there's just four examples and Patricia's going to share more. I'm going to share more, but I want you to make those your foundational yeah. scriptures because people will challenge you on this. What you mean? You, you see angels, you see demons. People will challenge you on this and you're going to have to have scriptures to say, yes, this is the gift that I walk in. And these are the scriptures. Don't you agree, Patricia? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Good, yeah. good foundational scriptures. Because that's what's going to really allow you to be able to explain this as this increases in your life. That's why I want you to go through the word and meditate on those scriptures this week. Because you want to make, like when the Lord gave me a vision about this webinar and the people on it were going to be planted and they're going to be in deep soil. It's going to be the root. So you want a foundation in the word as you come up and grow in this. And as we teach you the foundational principles tonight, yeah. we're going over the very basics. We want to go over the very basics because it's important to have a strong foundation. So when then stuff rises up, you won't back down. If you know right. this is a gift from the Holy Spirit, God's called you in it. You've got to have a fortitude in this gift. You've got to know it's from the Holy Spirit as 1 Corinthians 12, 10. And realize you have to cultivate it like every other gift. Amen. Amen. All right, Patricia, I'll let you share some of the um, descriptions. You had a definition. I just want you guys to hear it. Um, I wrote some things down on how I des described discernment and some generals of the past. And so did she. And I love the ones that the Lord gave her. They were okay. good. Well, let me just give you the definition of discernment is just basically the act of perceiving and discerning something, having that gut feeling. And I always tell people, go by what you feel in your gut. Okay, go by that feeling that you feel in your gut. Some people are like, ah, they ignore it and they just go somewhere else. But always go by that feeling in your gut. Proverbs 3.21 says this by Do uh, Dr. Brian Simmons wrote the Bible, uh, translated it, I should say, as a theologian on uh, the Passion Translation. It says, my child, never drift off course from these two goals for your life, to walk in wisdom and to discover discernment. Don't ever forget how they empower you. So wisdom and discernment will empower you because there is wisdom that comes from heaven. And that's why, April, we do need to pray that our eyes of our understanding are enlightened. It's extremely important. Yeah. You know, general, I want to break it down. General discernment means it is a product of experience, discipline, and study. Okay, so your experiences in life, the discipline you make by studying the word every day and life experiences. Discerning of spirits is a spiritual gift imparted by the Holy Spirit. So, you know, people say that, you know, I was born with this. I believe it with all my heart. The recognition of it was when I was four years old. Some yeah. people, they don't grow into it later in life. Some people have leaders that impart it in them. I thank God that I did have those type of leaders in my life, you know, uh, that were generals that did do an impartation to even a greater level. But um, it's not something to boast on, but it is a great gift to have. Yeah. So today we're going to distinguish if you're just a general discerner, you study the word and you want more and more and more. We're going to teach you week by week how to step into this and you will have a great impartation when this course is over. Amen. OK, so um, the Lord showed me all believers can grow in discernment by meditating on the word, like I said. And as you um, as you grow in your faith, you're going to grow in the word. You're going to grow is being in the secret place, 
Keep yourself in the secret place. And what do you go mean in the secret place? If you can give yourself even 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes a day, if that's minimal, all you can do to just lay in the presence of the Lord and say, God, I'm giving you this time. Show me the things in the spirit I need to know, Lord. And he will show you. Um, you're going to, another key for discerning discernment is observing others. It's important when I go to conferences or I go where the Lord sends me, I observe what's going on in my atmosphere. And then I align myself with others who have the same gift like me in April. Amen. Okay. And you're going to mature in that as you observe even when I go to a conference or even taking a class like this, I will ask the Holy Spirit, why am I going there? It Amen. might be something God wants to show us. Amen. Okay. Assignment. Yeah, I agree. It's an assignment. And it's very important that you know that, that when you go somewhere, that you know why. Because God can open the heavens and show you a whole realm. Yeah. Yeah. Because we are seated in heavenly places. Yeah. And if we're seated in heavenly places, we see what heaven's doing. I just yeah. think about my mom as she says that I immediately thought about you, mom. You went to Billy Graham's um, place where you held that conference. And I know you said you're going again. So ask the Lord why he sent you to that Billy Graham place. I forget the name of it. The Cove, was that where you stayed at, mom, if you're still on here? But the Lord immediately brought that. So press into why he took you there. <laughs>